Welcome to Double Take with Double R Friday morning. Uh, no, it's not even Friday morning. It's Friday afternoon already. February the 3rd, 2023. Still trying to get used to that 2023, man. I'm, I'm, you know, it's going to take me probably till about November, December to figure it out. But by then, we're going to be uh, shifted into 2024. Sounds kind of weird, right? It really, really does. Anyways, like I said, the weekend is here. Always, always should I say, awesome to have the weekend in front of us. No doubt. I got to tell you all something, man. I'm going to show you all something here. I received a very, very ugly gift in the mail. Um, I think it was Monday. Um, I received one of these that you get when uh, a certain camera takes a picture of your car supposedly running a red light, but you really didn't. Well, um, I got um, a little note there, a little gift from Balcones Heights telling me that I passed a red light with one of those, you know, those camera deals that they have over the street lights and stuff like that, which are now illegal. But they still will send you a notice, a fine, and see if they're able to still collect from... Uh, Whatever you want to call it, it's not even a ticket. I, I I really don't know what what you want to call this, a fine or whatever the case may be. I just know that on the on on this little kind of an invoice kind of a thing, it claims I was going 30 miles an hour while I was running a red light. Who runs 30 miles an hour running? If you're gonna run a red light, man, you crank it up, right? Put the pedal to the metal. 40, 50, 60. I'm gonna make that yellow light. 30 miles an hour? Well, anyways, uh, let me just say this. I did my homework on this. I don't know if this is going to work out for me or not. But what I looked up and what I found out was that they cannot um, charge you for a ticket. They cannot get a hold of your insurance company. They, it will not ruin your credit. Uh, they cannot uh, enforce it. Like, if you don't pay it, they'll throw you in jail. It is just kind of like a fine. Now, if you pay it or don't, uh, from what I've looked up, I shouldn't worry about it. I called up my lawyer, asked him about it, and he said, don't worry about it, Robert. They can't do nothing to you, man. Those things are illegal now. They're just trying to get some of their money back because they uh, spent a whole lot of money um, on all this camera surveillance of taking pictures of you with supposedly you're passing a red light, you're not, you're speeding, you're not. And it was outlawed in the state of Texas, so he told me, don't worry about it. But um, the ticket is $75, and I'm like, que si, que si, que no, que no, if I'm going to pay for it. Um, I hate having anybody sending me something saying, hey, you owe me money, kind of a person. I'm going to figure it out, though. But still, it's still kind of like, you know, it sucks when you get something in the mail with a picture of your car kind of going underneath a red light. But I wasn't passing a red light. I mean, at 30 miles an hour, give me a break. Well, anyways, we're going to figure that one out. Let's see what's going on out here in this crazy, crazy world. Can you believe that today, November, November, February the 3rd, is considered the day the music died? We all know about this, right? Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, the Big Bopper were killed on this day in the year 1959. Um, I've seen the movie of Buddy Holly. Awesome. Seen the movie of Richie Valens, right? La Bamba. I'm surprised they never made a movie about the Big Bopper, but I've always been intrigued about the day the music died. I really, really have, man. There's just so many stories out there. So many, uh, you know, like, uh, hey, man, Buddy Holly had a gun inside the plane. Maybe he shot the pilot kind of a thing. You know, there was always conspiracy theories. But one fact that is out there that, that is supposedly a story that is out there I'm going to share it with you guys that I found on the internet was that when they collected the bodies, the mortician, the guy who brought in the bodies and uh, who was supposed to take care of the bodies, he was very, very concerned that he was not going to get paid. So what he did, he opened up uh, Buddy Holly's wallet and took out the money and paid himself. Can you imagine taking the wallet out of a dead person and collecting money for yourself? Like I said, I found that story on the internet. That is simply crazy. It really, really is. So many theories, so many stories of what happened, but they're never going to know what happened. I just know that uh, it's unfortunate that they put the spotlight on these three guys, no doubt, but they forget about the pilot. 
uh, it was a really really young pilot that was uh that was flying the plane that really didn't belong up there and unfortunately it cost everybody their lives so today is the day the day the music died wow buddy holly richie valens the big bopper died on this day back in the year 1959 let's get back here to san antonio check this out an officer who was responding to a family violence incident was bitten in the butt by one of the family's dogs you know it's hard enough as it is for police officers to deal with family violence and stuff like this and uh dealing with guns and knives and all that stuff now you gotta feel you know now, now you gotta deal with a dog right well the dog ran after the police officer and shot him, and should i say bit him in the butt the police officer responded by shooting and killing the dog good for the police officer man <laughs> i would have done the same thing only i'm not carrying a gun I said, I know my Naga's juicy, but it can't be that juicy. Come on. Anyways, uh, just unfortunate for the police officer. Well, he's been taken to the hospital, and I think he's going to be okay. And there you go. There you go. You never know, man, on whatever's going on on these family violences, etc. You never know what these police officers are going to encounter. And there you go. There's one of them, and it all happened right here in San Antonio, Texas. Now, let's go to more of the... Um, spotlight kind of a tv a newscast kind of a thing greg simmons we all know greg simmons as being the sportscaster for you know in ksat 12 san antonio texas for a long 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 time you know um really man the guy is uh well known here i mean i mean i watch whenever i watch sports ksat 12 greg simmons always and then to find out who and uh and i got somebody calling me and then to find out then to go and find out that uh, he was pulled over and he was arrested for a DWI. Uh, really, really unreal and even more so. Well, uh, Greg Seven, 67 years old. Um, he had worked for KSAT 12 for 42 years. Well, anyways, he was pulled over right there on 281. And, uh, well, when the police officer told him, let me see your li your driver's license, he showed him his, his, his he showed him his American Express card. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means, it's unfortunate. It really, really is, you know, for Greg Simmons. And lo and behold, not even a week afterwards, he uh, resigned from KSAT 12. Now, it uh, it is being said that Greg Simmons has hired a San Antonio lawyer to defend him on this DWI case. It's going to be really, really interesting. It's a good luck to Greg Simmons, man. It's just unfortunate. All I'm going to say is this, man. I'll speak for myself. I've been out there, man. I don't get wasted, toasted. I don't know what I'm doing. But I've been out there with a couple of uh, drinks here and there once in a while. And I've rolled the dice. And I've been very, very lucky. But then again, I think when I have a couple of beers in my system, it makes me that much more careful. It really, really does. But like I said, good luck to Mr. Greg Simmons on fighting this DW case, man. He's going to need it now. <laughs> Let's go to Dallas, Texas, where monkeys are being stolen from the zoo. <laughs> Poor monkeys, man. They're already behind bars there at the zoo. Well, anyway, two monkeys were found abandoned. Well, actually, two monkeys escaped the Dallas Zoo, and then they were found in an abandoned home. I mean, those poor monkeys said, we've had enough of this. You know, how many, I mean, how much can they put up with, man? Everybody's staring, taking pictures. Hey, Mr. Monkey, right? And all this other good stuff. Can you sing Last Train to Clarksville? No, you don't know the song. You're not that old. Okay. Well, anyways, um, these two monkeys were found abandoned in a house a couple of miles away from the zoo. And uh, <laughs> according to news reports, the monkeys were claimed to saying, we're hungry. And there you go. So they were glad to go back to the zoo where they are fed three times a day. There you go. So look, uh, they're still investigating, trying to find out what the hell happened. How in the hell did they escape? There you go. Anyways, this coming weekend, starting Thursday, is the beginning of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. I love the rodeo, man. I really, really do. Now, I'm going to tell you something here. I'm going to give you all a fun fact. Um, I know the Super Bowl is this coming Sunday. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday, right? The Super Bowl. Well, I bought tickets for the rodeo um, boo, a month ago. And the only reason, you know, I go once a year and... Um, 
I was really, really interested in seeing Ronnie Millsap. I love Ronnie Millsap music. Never seen him perform. And I'm following my own advice. I tell people, if you've got some music icons out there you've never seen before and you get a chance to go see him, go see him because you never know. Well, I thought, well, you never know. So I bought tickets for Ronnie Millsap. And lo and behold, it's on the same evening of the Super Bowl. I'm okay with that. I get it. The Super Bowl. Philadelphia Eagles, Kansas City Chiefs. I get it. I've seen a lot of Super Bowls. I'm going to record it. I'm going to the rodeo, man, and uh, take care of business out there and drink a couple of beers and watch the, the the horses and the cows and all that other good stuff and see Ronnie Millsap. Definitely looking forward to that. But like I said, the rodeo starts this Thursday, and they always kick it off with uh, horses and cows and stuff like that going through downtown San Antonio. You know, they leave poo-poo all over the streets and everything else. And uh, you know when the rodeo's in town. <laughs> but just in case you don't know the rodeo's in town, I'm telling you, man, once it's all said and done, if you're walking around downtown, I guess the rodeo's in town, honey. And there you go. Anyways, uh, looking forward to the rodeo. I think it's like about two weeks. And it never fails, man, when the rodeo's in town. I mean, we always get some screwed up weather. We always do. We really, really do. Well, anyways, uh, let's get to uh, the Cruising Classic Show. Now, the second preview, we'll call it Listen View, Preview, however you want to call it, the freebie. Will be happening this Sunday from 7 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Simple. Go to robertreamersradio.com and just click on the Listen Cruising Classic Sunday Show. The red buttons and you'll be on, you'll be logged on, and you can enjoy the show. This will be the last freebie. And from then on out, it will be subscriber only. And, of course, you can always subscribe to the Cruising Classic Show. Easy, man. $12 a month. Que mas quieren? $12 a month. That's $3 a show. One dollar an hour, if you want to break it down like that. Well, anyways, you can always subscribe to the show, and that way you can listen in to the Cruising Classic Show each and every Sunday. The first Cruising Classic Show is going to be happening for, pop, 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 pop. let me see here, three, four, five, February the 19th. There we go. That's going to be the, the subscriber-only shows, but uh, this coming Sunday will be anybody can listen in, and there you go. And uh, the subscriber part of it, it's all to help keep everything up and running and uh, uh, support the cruising classic show. Um, trust me, man, you're going to get more than your money's worth. I promise you that I've already got several subscribers who have already signed up. I'm expecting a whole lot more. It's going to be a lot of fun. Never too late to subscribe. Never too early to subscribe. It's simple as going to Robert and subscribe to the double R cruising classic show. That's it for me, everybody. Hopefully everybody has a good weekend. I'm going to try and do the same and, uh, we'll see you next time on double take with double R. Orale.